Hello, I'm Robin Wally. Welcome to Lenscraft. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to use the adjustment brush in Lightroom. If you've seen some of my recent videos, you'll know I've been using the tools in Lightroom to make increasingly complex selections, and today is no different. What I'm going to do is show you how to select this tree over here so that we can sharpen it selectively or make a selective adjustments to it. And I'm going to do this not using really fancy tools, but I'm going to use just the basic adjustment brush that you see here. So let's take a quick look at the adjustment brush. You've got two brushes here, an A and a B. We've also got the Erase tool. Now, brushes A and B allow me to paint in selections, and the Erase tool helps me remove any where I've perhaps overpainted into an area that I don't want to select. The size slider controls the size of the brush, so I can make it larger or smaller. And we've then got the feather option. Now the feather at the moment, if you look at my brush, you can see that it's got an inner circle and an outer circle. And the distance between those two circles is the feathering of the brush. At the moment it's got a setting of 50, which is quite a soft edge brush. I'm actually going to move it down to zero so that I've created a hard edge brush. And that's going to make it easier to clean up any mistakes I make if I overpaint on the tree. The next option I want to look at is flow. And this determines how many brush strokes you need to, to use to make a selection. Now when it's at 50, I'm going to have to make multiple brush strokes to build up my selection. And I don't want to do that. I just want to make one brush stroke or one click with my mouse in order to make the selection. So I'm going to push that all the way up to 100. The other slider I've got down here is the density, and this controls the maximum strength that the brush stroke will reach. At 50, it means that I'm only partially selecting something. I'm going to push that up to 100 now, so I make the maximum selection. And the other key to making this work is this simple auto mask option here. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to come over here to my tree, and I'm going to start to paint on the tree trunk. So if I click there, you can see the red of the mask where the selection has been applied. Now I'll actually turn this on so that you can see it permanently as I paint. And I just use this option down here. And if you look, you can see that some areas of the tree trunk have been selected and other areas haven't. And that's because I've got this auto mask option on. If I now click one of the areas that wasn't selected, that's now painted in. So I can actually paint over quite a lot of the tree trunk here selectively. And as I'm painting, it's filling in the details of the tree, but not the areas around the tree. Now there is some overspill, but we're going to clean that up in a minute. So all I have to do now is paint over the areas that I want to select carefully with the brush tool. And when I get up to these branches up here, what I'm actually going to do is rather than move to a smaller brush tool, I'm going to enlarge it so that I'm covering a lot of area. And then I make one click and perhaps another couple of clicks. And you can see I've selected the detailed branches and I can use that technique to cover the entire tree branches and make good selections. Now there is a little bit of overspill around the edges of the tree as I'm making these selections, but you can see it's actually working pretty well. And we're going to clean up those other um, overspills in a moment. So I'm just making the bulk of the selection now for the tree. And I'm now going to just use a smaller brush in some of these areas to avoid overspill. And there we are, we've created quite a good selection there. Apart from there is these elements of overspill around the edges. So now I'm actually going to select my erase brush. And again, I've got a low feather setting and a high flow setting. You'll notice the density can't be selected. And that's because you're just going to be erasing the areas. If you wanted to partially erase something, you'd actually use a lower flow. Again, I've got the auto mask option because that's going to help me clean up. And I'm just going to now paint over these edges or these areas that I selected in error. Now 
And there we have quite a reasonable selection now. Now, if you've got a more recent version of Lightroom, such as this one, which is 2017.1, released in January of 2018, you can actually use this range mask um, option here. And I can use that with the color selector. If I select this um, color sampler here, I can actually draw an area to sample on my tree. And if I hold down my shift key, I can again make multiple selections to add to this. Now, what's happening when I'm making these selections is the mask or the selection area is being refined further. And I can use this slider here to really fine tune those selections. Now, as I've moved that right over to the left, you'll see that some of the branches around the edge of the tree have now lost their selection. If I move this to the right, the selection now becomes refined so that the branches are selected again. So between those two tools, you can actually make quite a good selection. You don't need to use the range mask tool if you don't want to. You can actually do quite a good job using the brush with the auto mask and the arrays. So let's now turn off that mask. So the selection still stays in place. All we've done is hide the overlay and we can start to make some adjustments to this tree. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just increase the exposure a little bit to make it stand out. And I'm going to increase the contrast and I'll open up the shadows because I don't want there to be too much dark contrast there. And now I can increase my clarity and I can also introduce some more saturation into the tree. And most noticeable of all, I can actually add some sharpening to the tree. And that actually makes it stand out quite considerably against the background. So let's just turn off the adjustments. There's the adjustments off. There they are back on. And you can see that that's a substantial difference. So we've selected the tree very precisely against its background and we've been able to apply selective adjustments to just that tree. I hope you found that useful. I'm Robin Worley, this is Lenscraft, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you soon.